Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is Gap, the Great American Broadcast Network. Hey everybody, how are you? It's Alex and it is the uh, Ramble. And the Ramble goes from now, of course, until midnight Eastern Time here on the uh, left, right coast of the United States of America. Uh, from New York, New York, the city's so nice they named it twice. Yada! Okay, we got a guest tonight and uh, uh, it's a video one. And, uh, well, it's, it's for me, and many times, it's like going back into the past. Ladies and gentlemen, looking at you on the screen is, I refer to her as my second ex-wife. <laughs> that is Ronnie Bennett from Lake Oswego, Oregon. And uh, we, were, we were talking earlier about the fact that in, in Oregon, you can, get, you can get pot for recreational purposes. But you can also die with dignity by having them prescribe a suicide pill, Right. You can do both. Yeah, you could like, like. I don't know about both together, but. First, you should, well, no, my suggestion is first you smoke the pot, then you take the pill. Oh, <laughs> well, that would be a good order. Okay, yes. so you'll be high while you're going. What a wonderful state you live in. Where do I get one of those? <laughs> We're not the only one. There are five or six or eight others, you know. Yeah, yeah. But. Uh, but you know, when you go to the dispensaries, you have to go to a special store. Yeah. And when you go to the dispensaries, it's. It's there is beautiful and clean and out as pharmacies and and the buds are in their these little bowls and they each have names and the people just they are so knowledgeable they're mostly very young and they're very knowledgeable about this kind does this this is good for music and this is good for sex and this is good for aches and pains or whatever you know or let's it's, it's really quite an experience to go there it's a whole different kind of place yeah yeah you mean the pot store this is not the death store yeah uh, that, that, no 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 uh, the pot if, store. <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah so so really uh, you uh you you have um uh, you have the best of both worlds up there i guess you know so that's good that's cool um, so anyway, um, uh, uh, what, is, what is the biggest issue among your older readers? Now, you see, your readers are older, uh, yes, although I would imagine are. you have a few Most young people. pretty old. Well, yeah, but I would imagine you have some young ones who are curious about what it's going to be like, you know? Um, people in their, I have a few readers in their mm, 20s, 30s, 40s, some people think is old. I don't anymore. <laughs> um and yeah, I would say about five to ten percent of my readers are young. Yeah, so uh, uh, being being, uh, but the uh, since you basically have older older readers, what are their major concerns right now? In other words, uh, in my case, I would say it would probably still have to do with health and with with drug plans and 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 uh, what's going to happen to Medicare, what's going to happen to uh, things like that. Would that, would that be the major topic that they're interested old, in? No, I think that old people. I think that old people are interested in all the same things that young people are. Um, we don't have to worry if you're retired. If you're that old, you don't have to worry any longer much about you know jobs and keeping your job or finding a new job or getting a raise and all of those complications that we spend most of our life doing. Um, health takes your right. Health takes a greater part of our time because most of the health problems in in the world are you know old people have doesn't mean young people don't get sick but um but you get sicker as you get older so that's important and they make it very difficult the programs uh, the insurance companies medicare uh part d in particular make it as difficult as possible it seems to me to get it worked out of what's the best plan for you so you spend once a year you spend a lot of time on that but i don't I don't want old people to be defined by their health, good or bad, mm -hmm. any more than somebody who is 30 is defined by their health. And I don't mean that in public policy. I mean that in general attitude toward old people. But let me be honest about something. When I go out to dinner with a bunch of people, and usually they're older, 
okay, because I don't hang around with kids anymore. Um, the main topic of conversation at dinner becomes health. You know, how's your health doing? What the, uh, how, did you find a good doctor for that? Hey, wh what about your drug plan? Have you got a better drug plan than I do? I mean, all of a sudden, I mean, you don't even have to put it on the agenda. That becomes the topic du jour. Yes, and I think that I, I've been thinking about that very hard recently. And I think it's because most people are, are healthy through most of their lives that we don't much have to, th unless you're very unlucky and get some terrible diseases in your 20s, 30s, 40s, um, you go through life, you have a flu now and again, uh, different things happen, you go to the doctor, you have them fixed. But when you, <laughs> after a certain age, it's just one damn thing after another because that is the nature of living a long life. I mean, you can die young and not have those problems or you can have a longer life. And our culture, our society doesn't prepare us for the amount of health problems we're going to have and the difficulties we're going to have making them work with the, with the healthcare community. Mm -hmm. And that gives us very good reason to be comparing notes a lot because we, we have no experience at it. It's brand new when you hit that age. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot to talk about and find out what your friends are doing. Um, when I was looking for a doctor, when a doctor just dismissed me with some symptoms saying, oh, don't worry about it, you know, it's, it's probably just a virus, and walked out of the room, I said, oh, I think I need a new doctor. Uh, um, yeah, yeah, well, I, I let, let, me, let me just remind people that you, a while back you had a touch of the cancer. <laughs> yeah, the touch of the I cancer. Mean, little, little Richard used that as an excuse why he didn't show up somewhere once by <laughs> saying, that phrase, exactly? yes, yes, I had, I, <laughs> pardon me, I had a touch of the cancer. Yes, I had a touch of pancreatic cancer. <laughs> and I got incredibly lucky, and a few weeks ago, yeah. after some tests, CT scan and some other tests, they told me that I'm cancer-free. So, But I spent, for the past eight months, I have spent a lot of time with doctors and at medical centers. And um, But it struck me recently, and I've been rethinking some of, the, um, some of what I had been believing about it being unfair to characterize old people as uh, <laughs> mostly just talking about what some people call their organ recitals. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, and I've really come to like the phrase now. You know? <laughs> and, um, and, and of course we're interested because there's just so damned much of it. If you yourself are healthy, you know people who aren't or who just got a terrible diagnosis or have chronic diseases that are hard to work with, um, and we don't have any information about living with these things until we get old. So why shouldn't we be talking about it with our friends? Yeah, well, I, I, yeah, but I'm saying that when you get together with other old people, that becomes a major topic. I mean... Uh, and I just told you why. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, you know, I mean, uh, I mean, I find that I'm always talking about it. Well, I was always talking about it when I was in my 30s. So, yeah, yeah, know. yeah. There's that hypochondriac word, you know. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm, I, I, I found out that I was always a hypochondriac when times were good. When times are bad, I wasn't hypochondriacal. In other words, if I, when I was out of work and things, I was scraping for a job, didn't get feel sick at all, Right. But the minute everything I'll give you was that, good, but it's not my memory. <laughs> uh, uh, oh, you don't remember it that way. I see. No, okay. I don't. All right. By uh, the way, speaking of memory, mm -hmm. I have a story from our marriage years. Oh that God! I'm not do, sure do, I do we want to drag well, out that? I, what? Go ahead. No, and I'm not sure I remember it properly. So I want to tell you, and I want you see how you remember it. Okay. 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 And this came up because the other day. I realized that I, this must be the time of year for it. There are tons of commercials on television about dating websites. You know, yeah. you go in and yeah. record things. And uh, there's, there's been a push since Christmas of, of commercials on this. And I thought about this is early 60s. You were doing the show in Houston. I was producing it. Mm -hmm. And one of the very earliest dating systems... Uh, came to us about doing a show about it, and this was one where you had to mail away. Remember, the old, this is snail mail. 
-hmm. And then they would send you a long form you had to fill out and answer questions about all the things you were and were interested in and cared about and that sort of stuff. Then you had to mail it back. And what they were going to do for our show is put it through their database, if there was such a thing as a database in the early uh, 60s. And uh, I guess it was mid-60s. There was, but they were all on these, these punch cards. <laughs> okay. Well, anyway, they would put it through their system in some yeah. manner. And what they were going to do for the show is they would have the closest match of whatever people said they wanted in the opposite sex, um, because we weren't doing gay people back in those days. Um, uh, they would find the people who were most closely matched. And I then yeah. they got to go out to dinner and go to something or another, and it was all paid for. I remember that much, and I'm confident in that part of the memory, okay? Mm-hmm. Uh, what I also remember, but I'm not sure if it's so, is that sometime later, month, weeks or months, the guy in the couple that they found yes. the closest man yeah. Oh, hold on a second. Was arrested... For. Wait a minute. We're, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. We're breaking up here a little bit. Let me. Let's just pause a second. Okay. He was arrested. Yeah. And I think it was for um, doing things you shouldn't do with little boys. Do I remember that correctly? You do remember that correctly. We had a. We had a. They had a date. I remember that she didn't like him. It, it turned out okay, to be. A, I don't have any memory. It of turned out to be a flop of a date, if I remember correctly. And then several months later, he was arrested for uh, pederasty or whatever. Okay, so I, I, I'm not fooling myself. Yeah, it really yeah. did happen. I think that was the end of me ever running dating contests on radio. <laughs> yeah, I think so. I think so. Just wanted to check on. Yeah, that. I do you remember that. I do remember that. Yeah. Yeah. And I remember how it turned out, which was not uh, not not nice. <laughs> no, <laughs> not, not nice. Um, so, what would you say then? Are uh, you say the major concerns of people in your group, your 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 audience, is is the same things that are affecting kids? Because I don't think kids care too much about what's going on. I don't think they give a shit whether well, no, no, Trump's president say, or not. I'm not comparing them to kids. I'm just saying that old people aren't, aren't all that different from people of every other age, yeah. every other, you know, adults of any other age. You have to say, some are really concerned with politics and, you know, and, and sometimes I veer over into it since this past election. Um, others, I get cancellations when I write about Trump or the federal government sometimes, or they don't, there are people who yeah. don't want to read that stuff. And so they, right. they unsubscribe. Um, and, uh, politics and books and their grandchildren and their families and whatever interests they've had all their lives. They're not yeah. any different than they were at 40, except they don't have to get up and go to work. Yeah. And you know, I think that's important. I think, people don't. I think that we separate old people so much from the West, rest of the culture. You don't go to work anymore. Nobody's interested in what you think anymore. Uh, they care, I guess, at voting time because we vote in larger numbers. But people don't really know what we're like. They think we're crippled and sick and um, and have probably forgotten anything we ever knew, if we knew anything to begin with. You cross this divide. There's a certain moment. Well, I mean, we, we mentioned this, we mentioned this uh, the last time we talked, I think, and that is that with younger people, uh, we, well, with the rest of the population, as the older you get, the more invisible you become. Right. You know, I mean, I walk down the street now, and I doubt if anybody really pays any attention to me. Where in the old days, you know, some people would pay attention to me. You know, this is really, I read something really interesting online somewhere about that, that women learn this much younger than men do. Mm -hmm. There's a certain place, usually between 35 and 40, maybe a little past 40, when you just, you walk down the street and you realize, or in a store or anything, you're invisible, absolutely invisible, exactly what you're saying. Men don't get that. They get a few more years, up to a decade longer than women before you guys <laughs> yeah, okay. get invisible. Yeah, okay. I know. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then you get it. And uh, we're losing a lot of expertise. You know, old people, lots of old people uh, volunteer and are really interested in that and giving back. 
And that's one of the places where young people, very young people, particularly teens and 20s, cross over with old people and get to know each other on volunteer organizations, whether it's their church or Meals on Wheels mm-hmm. or whatever, you know, food pantries or whatever it is that they they do to volunteer. That's where different age groups, it's one of the few places where they commonly come together. It's a good thing. Yeah. Now, I, I would say that because of your subject matter, uh, you, 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 your, your audience isn't necessarily left or right, okay? Because the things you're talking about are not political at this, at that, let me get up to this. Uh, uh, but you can't avoid dealing with Trump and with how no, he, and, and what he would, how he would affect and how he is affecting older people. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so do you get any heat from like your readers who are like Trump fans saying, oh no, it isn't that bad, you know? trying to justify it? Uh, Here's an interesting tidbit about Republicans of a certain kind. And and I don't have those readers because they they unsubscribe all the time or quit coming to the site. And the reason is, and if they don't go away, um, they, unlike unlike Democrats, you've got to say it, are so vile in their comments. And they attacked me or they attack other people who have commented that they don't agree with in really nasty ways. Democrats don't do that. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I've had a rule on my blog for a decade or more is that you can argue. Argue is a good thing. Let's have a good discussion. But you cannot attack me personally or anybody else who has written in the comments personally. And they invariably do, the Republicans or the Trump supporters. So and and I and if you do it, you only get one chance at that on my blog all these years. If you do that, it's I delete it and I block you from ever commenting again. No recourse. I don't tell you. It's just done. You won't be allowed to comment ever again because it's it destroys a conversation. Yes. If you allow yeah, that absolutely. To go on. absolutely. So they don't stick around. Is what I'm saying. Yeah. So in other words, they, so do you feel that your audience then is more to the left than it is to the right? Yes, and that's very interesting considering that uh, the oldest generation is mostly Republican or lean right wing. Why, why would the older population be Republican? Do, do liberals die early because you know, we I did all those really drugs or whatever? It's always been that way, is, and that people as they get older become more conservative. conservative and they don't understand that. Except you don't want the do you not want the world to change? Well, I think p- part of the problem is that as you get older, you have more of a vested interest in this country, well, that. and you've made a made a living. Maybe you've made a lot of money, and therefore money sometimes. I mean, I'm, I've made a lot of money in my time, and I never found myself going conservative. I never found myself going right ever, 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 ever. Okay, but a lot of people I know who the minute they made money, all of a sudden became conservatives, became right-wingers, you know, and, uh, and and you may be right. Older people are probably more conservative than younger people. Well, that's what, what all the surveys show. Um, and I don't, I, it really annoys me <laughs> because uh, particularly this administration, more than the Republicans when we were younger, mm-hmm. um, uh, really wants to destroy the safety net, not just for old people, although it's mostly for old people, but there's plenty there for younger people, disabled people, uh, and they're systematically, both Trump and the people he's appointed to those um, those cabinet posts are, are systematically doing away with them. I mean, they, they, since they can't just vote Medicare out or Social Security, they keep picking away at it in little pieces, a little piece here, a little piece there, each year as much as they can. Uh, and it just keeps getting to be more and more difficult uh, for people who need those services. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and a lot of old people go along with that. And I find that really <laughs> disturbing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't understand voting against your own best interests. I just don't get it. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I can't see why a person who is over the age of sixty-five would vote for somebody who's against Medicare, as an example. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
because there's uh, there's no reason to be against Medicare if you're an older person. <laughs> You know, I was so healthy all my life that I didn't know much about it um, until I got sick last June. Yeah. And I've now spent eight or nine months Medicare, with Medicare, the supplemental that I bought, and the Part D prescription drug pen. And it has covered everything. Nobody has ever questioned anything that the doctors wanted to do. It was just done and it was paid for, for the most part. In fact, the most expensive part of my treatment is the drugs. I pay a much higher percentage, way higher percentage for drugs, even though I'm doing fairly well. I've got good prices on my drugs uh, than I did for any of the procedures and surgeries right. and office visits and that sort of thing. Um, and it's simple. I don't do anything. I walk in. We have our, we do whatever we're going to do, the doctors and the nurses and me, mm -hmm. and they take care of all the paperwork. I don't do anything. Right. You know, the only, the only hard one I've had is choosing a, a Part D plan, a, a prescription drug plan every year because they change every single year. And a drug that was cost almost nothing last year can be triple, even quite, well, we all know about Martin Shkreli, you know, thousands of times more expensive than it was last year and he's not the only one doing it drug companies are doing it too oh, just oh, not quite uh, so uh, flamboyantly i'll give you an example of something uh, my uh, the one pill i do take uh, that's expensive is cialis and i take it for uh, benign prostate hyperplasia i don't take it because i need a boner uh, i'm getting too old to need one anyway so uh uh it, it, you know i and and i'm fighting to get uh the company to you know, my doctor has written a letter of necessity, and we'll see what happens. But I read that Medicare absolutely will not pay for it because it is like three hundred and twenty-five dollars a month, which is that's that that's for daily Cialis, which is what you take for BPH. Three hundred and twenty-five dollars is the going rate uh, on on Cialis. So Medicare won't even pay for Cialis, no matter what's wrong with you, but they will pay if you want to have a penis pump installed. <laughs> That's very funny. Is, 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 is the reason that you're using Cialis, is that an accepted, yes. official? Yes, yes, FDA has FDA approved, FDA has approved Cialis for, for benign prostate hyperplasia, yeah. That they found so that the that side benefit of, of Seattle. Medicare, does it? Huh? Yeah, I, I know. Think that makes much sense about Medicare. I think it's because the drug is so damn expensive, you know. And they think I think part of their problem is they want they want you to justify it. They want your doctors to justify it because a lot of people would say, "Well, I've got a big prostate. I need it." But what they really need it for uh, is the bone. Of course they would. Okay. Sure they would. You yeah. know. So, so, I can understand for that reason for them questioning it, but they still should uh, pay for it. Once a doctor has, yeah, but I don't know if Medicare Part D does. I I read that it will not take care of Cialis under any conditions, you know. So, you know, whatever, you know, it that's that's the way things go. But I, what what insurance do you have as a supplemental that has been good for you? Uh, it's the one from AARP. Yeah, ARP has usually been the best. And and part and you know they they label the different kinds A B C D you know E yeah. through I don't know whatever I use F which is the most comprehensive one and yeah. probably the most. Expensive. How much do they charge a month for that? Now, right I, now I, I'm paying about two twenty five. Now you see two twenty five. She's paying two twenty five. I'm paying for my supplemental at the Union uh, hundred and seventy eight dollars a month. Mm -hmm. uh, and that includes dental and pharmacy as well. Oh, I have no dental. See, uh, I've got but thirty five thousand dollars yeah. worth of dental work in my mouth. But that's about the, the reason why I've got like one of the best plans. I mean, it really they really do take care of you this union. But anyway, uh, it, the the fact is that people don't realize that just because you've got Medicare, it only takes care of 80%. You gotta fill in that other 20%, so you get a supplemental, the supplement. and the supplemental is like for her $223 a month, you know? So, I mean. Uh, well, if you look at that compared to two things, yeah. the amount of money that I would have had to pay out of pocket, mm -hmm. that I don't have to pay during these last yeah, right. Eight, nine months. I mean, hundreds of thousands of dollars we're talking about. I just couldn't have had the treatment. I don't have that kind of money. Mm -hmm. um, and that's the other side of it. Um, there's no recourse if you don't if you don't have the coverage right. and you don't right. have the money. Right. You so go home and, anyways, and just, 
you know, but uh, we're just telling you folks this so you know what to plan for in the future. This is your your life coming up and uh, all the things you're going to have to deal with and, and figure out. And um, uh, you're going to have to... You know, that's one of the things that worries me, that after my surgery, there were several weeks where I have, as some people call it, um, anesthesia brain. And then after I started chemo, chemo brain. And I didn't think quite arrogantly, I didn't think it really affected me much. It took me until I started getting over it to realize how impaired my thinking had been. In my case, it was particularly slow. And mm. sometimes in the early time, soon after the surgery and soon and during the chemo, I would go to read a sentence and I could feel a little hiccup of space as I read through the sentence that I understood each word, but it took a part of a second for me to put the whole sentence together to right. what it means. Right. And it's not, yeah. and now that's gone away again, now that I've got enough distance between me and those events. But what about people yeah. who they can take care of themselves, they can get things done, they live on their own or not, but um, but they're slower than they used to be. Everything gets slower as yeah. you get older. Yeah. Yeah. And how do they deal with There were times when I was near tears during the two days I went through trying to figure out a new Part D, if I wanted a new Part D uh, mm -hmm. And policy, and um, and if if I had been trying to do that with chemo brain, I'm not so sure I could have done it at mm -hmm. all. Hey, listen, I looked at the clock. We have we have whizzed past 25 minutes. <laughs> And um, uh, I'm not sure we should subject people to watching this. Oh, know, well, I think so. I think so. I think it's important for them to hear. And I think you're very informed on this area and everything else. I disagree with you. But on this area, <laughs> it's my job as an ex-husband. I've got to I've got to I've got to take that position. Ronnie, I to what? talk what? to you about the Oscars. Oh, well, what about the Oscars? Uh, it's, Forget it's, about it. We can go a couple of more minutes. The hell with this audience. What? Yeah, the Oscars. <laughs> Did you watch? Did I watch the Oscars? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I watched them. Well, I was, I'm writing about it for tomorrow, so that's what's on my brain for my blog post tomorrow. And I have very mixed feelings about it. It was kind of exciting, you know, the diversity um, and the inclusion of you know, Muslims and um, uh, immigrants and people of all kinds of ethnic backgrounds, and women, of course, coming off, starting with Harvey Weinstein, that seems to have changed things yeah. for a while. But I had very mixed feelings. You also had, if you remember, um, Bullock, Sandra Bullock, mm -hmm. when she came up on stage, I think she was doing a presentation, she said, lower the lights. She said, no, lower them further. Lower them further. I don't want people to know how old I am. I wanted to smash your face. Through. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with getting old. And Jane Fonda did the same kind of thing when she came out with Helen Mirren. She said something, and I think that um, Helen Mirren's in her early 70s. I think Jane Fonda is 80. Yeah. And she said, well, it's gl I'm glad to know that somebody like Oscar, it was the 90th Oscar, yeah. is older than we are. I'm. This is This is how pervasive ageism is and how hated old people are nobody will say we hate old people yeah but that's but you've got to appreciate it, every place if you if you put jane fonda a master class in facial reconstruction okay <laughs> next to helen mirren who has old gotten old with grace okay i'll take yeah. helen mirren every day you know She's quite a lady. <laughs> She's quite a lady. And she knows how to give away a jet ski, too. So, you know. <laughs> Wasn't that funny? I thought that was the weirdest thing. <laughs> Apparently, nobody wanted it except that one guy. <laughs> but uh, anyway. Hey, it also got the lowest ratings of any Oscar show ever. Really? Like you and me and all of our friends, I think it's fading from society. No, I don't think it's fading. I think that the problem this year was is that most of the results were predictable. They were all very predictable. Oh, I have to tell you something funny about one of the results. Yeah. 
what I've discovered now that I'm, you know, for the time being, it can always recur, but for the time being, I'm free of pancreatic cancer. I have discovered I don't want to hear the word anymore, right? Right. And I just, you know, let it go mm -hmm. and get on with living. And of course, every time I turn around, yeah. somebody is talking about pancreatic cancer or it's a plot point in a movie. It drives me crazy. <laughs> so before the Oscars, I decided that I, I liked it because of the actress, the star, but I also loved the name of three billboards outside Hemming, <laughs> Minnesota or whatever yeah, it was. Yeah. And uh, so the night before, I pulled it up on Amazon on television and watched it, and I find out the sheriff has got pancreatic cancer. Yeah. It's a big, big... <laughs> well, I'm happy because the film I, I want... Didn't about it for 35 years and now it's everywhere <laughs> the film that won is the film i wanted to have win so i was very happy with it you know it's one of the few years the one i rooted for won i didn't think shape of water would win but it did uh, i don't know if you've seen it but it is a beautiful movie you would love it you would i know what you like and don't like and you would love this film my tastes haven't changed. Well, I think, no, I, you have always been, uh, you've always kind of liked things that had a certain, um, f almost a, a fairy tale quality. I don't know how to describe it, but. No, not fairy tale. Well, anyway, this is the creature that, from the Black Lagoon meets beauty, you know, and it, uh, it's, it's a wonderful picture and wonderfully acted, and the cinematography everything terrific anyway hey listen we got to go otherwise this audience can be mad because i'm not going to be talking to them it's worth talking to you okay oh don't so, say that about your your viewers i know they know That's i give them nice. i give them a bad time okay oh, all right okay. all right i give them a bad time but and they know right. that till next time so uh, till next time ladies and gentlemen that is as i say my uh, former ex-wife i don't know how you describe it now uh, Ronnie Bennett, the only one in this group who actually legally has the last name Bennett. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Bye. 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 Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before. This is Gavin, the Great American Broadcast Network. And that's my uh, ex-wife, and we have her on every couple of weeks because she really knows her stuff. You know, about aging. And uh, it's a subject that's kind of a favorite of mine. Because <laughs> you can see, you know, there. And wait a minute, I'll take off the hat. See, I must be proud of being old. The only reason I got the hat on now is my I need a haircut. And my hair is like going every which way. So, anyway. Uh, listen, it's time for us to open up our Skype lines and to talk to the citizen panel in case you don't know what that is, the citizen panel is more than one person at a time talking to me. Okay. Uh, in fact, uh, it can be uh, we've got we you, well, we have had like twelve or thirteen at a time, but that's too much. But we go upwards to ten people if if need be, all talking uh, 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 together with each other, and it's kind of like a bunch of people sitting around in their in their living room talking. So you'll get an idea of what the citizens panel is all about. But anyway. Uh, it's time for you to call. If you want to call the program, go to gabnet.net. Over on the right-hand side of the page is all the information you'll need. You won't even miss the show, by the way, if you're watching it, because over there uh, it's playing right on the, on the website. So go over there, over on the right-hand side of the page, everything you want to know about uh, calling us and using Skype and so on, even a, a little, little thing you can click and directly just call us. You don't even have to go through the process of figuring out how to call us. You just open your Skype uh, that you've newly minted and brought down, and then you put it up in the, you know, uh, uh, you turn it on, you make sure it's on, and then you click the button that says call with a Skype logo, and uh, it calls our number right here. And so now this is the point in the program where I sit here waiting for people to call us. Uh, who knows if they will or if they want to, okay? But this is while we wait. Uh, and then uh, then I sit here and I feel like nobody, there's going to be a day when I do this and nobody's going to call. Watch. Hey, look who's here already. Ladies and gentlemen, the voice of GabNet, ladies and gentlemen, it's Rob Alfano. Hello, Rob. Hey, how are you? Uh, say, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, and they'll know who you are. Well, before I do... 
Yeah. I don't know what it is, but I can't see your video, not on the page, not in YouTube. I hear it. Well, I know it's going out because I can see that it's going out. I see that you see it right behind you because I see me there in, in your monitor. But when, like, I'm on your page right now and yeah. all I see is blank. And I don't know if that's my browser. On the GabNet page, it's it's there right now, live. I see it in your picture, but I don't see it on my no, browser. No, I'm on seeing the same thing, uh, only it's all gray. Are you, do you, go over to the GabNet.net. Are you on the GabNet.net? I am. That's you where want, I am. It will write in that uh, re sure. rectangle on the bottom. Are you using Chrome? Yeah. Look at that. You know, that's weird. That's very weird because uh, you're using Chrome. Uh -huh. Refresh that. Let's see if what happens I if you refresh it. Reopen it. Uh -huh. I've done. When you refresh it, that there, comes there up. There you go. It, yeah. No, it spins and then it goes away. Really? Yeah. See? That's very strange. That's something. And the same thing's going on when I go to YouTube. So I did the same thing. I went to YouTube. Wow. Because uh, I don't have that problem at all here. You know. So I'm at YouTube, right? Yeah. And I'm just going to type in, because I don't know the exact page, I'm just going to type in Alex Bennett. Oops. Let me see here. Type in Alex Bennett. Yeah. And there you are. Here's the, yeah, the yeah. ramble, right? It's, yeah. See it there? Yeah. I click on that. And, and nothing. Now, you don't have that same problem, do you, Phil? Uh, I was watching you on the uh, GabNet site. Uh, yeah. Okay. The, yeah. But, uh, see, they, they, but he he comes up blank on the GabNet site. Gab well, me, and in YouTube. Let me see what else I can do. Which mm -hmm. leaves me to believe that maybe your Chrome is missing a, a thing or something. Maybe I need to read uh, this computer. I don't know. Yeah. See, he's got it. Okay. So it must be me. Yeah. yeah there it is, yeah, and it's yeah. there. I am. Okay. okay. Yeah. No. Okay. So it's it's something with your Chrome. You might try Safari or something else and see if it works with one of the uh, others. It's a PC. I only have Chrome and so wait a minute. Do I have um no, you, you, what, what about the E one? What's the, the oh, oh the Edge? Yeah, and, uh, no, I don't Windows think it's Edge. Edge. Yeah, yeah. No, it's it was it's the old Chrome. Oh, wait, the old Chrome. You mean uh, Explorer. Microsoft Explorer. Explorer? You can't. They don't. It, they usually can't download it onto Windows anymore. They make you use this thing called Edge. Which is their oh. new version of Explorer? Okay. But, uh, now I see it. Now you see it. When I use Edge. Yeah. So my version of Chrome. That's there's something. Jacked. There's something there. Something that's jacked. Yeah. Well, that's good. That's weird. Well, you know what I find? This is a problem that I have with 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 just you know this is one of the great problems I've had with this thing that we do here, and that is having to deal with all the different browsers. Yeah. Because every browser reads things differently. Right. Like, I've, different I've got a thing up there. If you try to uh, do the uh, uh, listen to us using that tune in thing at the top of the page, on Safari, it won't work if you have right. Safari. And on, um, on Edge, it'll big, give you a big, giant, gigantic other uh, a page that comes up. It, they're all different. You know, uh, yeah. and 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 you can't. So I, what I do is I say, look, I'm going to default to Chrome because Chrome has the most users. All right. And then everybody else can fight for themselves. Uh, but that little thing I have that says Safari and other browsers use this. I like that because at least on Chrome, it comes up in the corner and it, it runs no matter what page you're going to and whatever. So I'm yeah. thinking of doing away with the tune in thing and putting a thing there that says click here to you know listen to because it works on most browsers however it doesn't work on uh, what's that one firefox ah that's the other browser i usually have on my yeah i mean i, I don't use either i don't use the internet uh explorer the microsoft browsers i use either firefox or mostly chrome yeah and now, you know, here at uh, this program, we use, I use an encoder on my Mac called NiceCast to mm -hmm. encode the program to go to the server. Uh, they just put up a notice. They're closing down NiceCast. Oh, nice. I mean, the company isn't closing down. They're just closing down NiceCast. And I'm going, why? why do, or why don't you just come up with something new? 
You know, I paid fifty bucks for it for a lifetime, uh, uh, a lifetime uh, thing with it. I guess lifetime means until they decide not to do it anymore. They're like, oh, you have fourteen years, huh? They tell me only about fourteen more years. Fourteen more years. So that is uh, that's going the way of all flesh. But I mean, I can find another browser. That's not a but not a browser, but a, a, a um, encoder. But you know, I like this. It's been a great encoder. I don't know why they you know don't want to just keep it up to date. And they say it'll keep working until M Macintosh or Apple decides right. to change their OS enough that it doesn't work with it. Right. Okay. But that could be a couple of years. But then I got a call this morning, God, 10 o'clock in the morning, which is early for me because I, I, you know, I usually go to bed about 2, 2.30. Uh, and from uh, uh, Jack Bishop, because Amy called him in a panic. She does this thing at another place where she does a show once a week for the Internet, you know, pays him something like 200 bucks a month to do it or something like that. And she's panicked because their Skype, it's the newer Skype and it won't work. You know, she can't figure out how to do group calls, which you can do with it. Uh, it, it just doesn't have as many bells and whistles on it. Okay. Um, but uh, so I said, you just go on, you get the classic Skype. Like I've told you guys, you know, there's a classic Skype. If you go over there, there's a drop down menu. And one of the drop downs is, uh, is classic Skype. Uh, and um, uh, I went over there, and classic Skype is gone. Ah. Do you know, uh, you can still get the other version of it, but you know why classic Skype is gone, according to Skype? Because they found that the installation program had bugs in it and was c causing your machine to be compromised. But once it's installed, you're fine. There's nothing wrong with it. That's a, and I just I wrote I wrote uh, uh, Jack a, a note with the with the thing they put out about it, and then on the bottom in big bold letters I wrote bullshit. You know they just want everybody to upgrade to this new more horrible version of Skype. So. Well, yeah. I mean, let's face it. They don't want to keep supporting older versions. Yeah. It costs money to do that. Yeah, and I need this version because the newer version doesn't look as good. I would have a bunch of bubbles and things like that on the screen, and pe people's pictures would be changing, and I don't want that. That's not uh, that's not my. Must, that must be a Windows thing because I just looked. It says I have the newest version. Yeah, on they, they haven't. Mac they haven't. Seven five nine. Yeah, they haven't changed it uh, yet. Yeah, oh. uh, they haven't changed it yet. So. But uh, even though it uh, says I'm using the newest uh, version and no, I don't have the bubbles. Well, no, but it's on the, it, it, but I'm talking about it, it's the Mac, it's the Apple. Uh, excuse me, it's the Windows the version Windows. that's the problem, okay? So it's the Windows version that's the problem. Um, but I, I use the Windows version here because I use a Windows machine to do the show with. The audio is going out using a Mac. Oh, it's a mess. It's a hey. mess. Once I uh, once I wipe that other machine, it's so going to be so fast. You're going to want to do the show on the mini. Yeah, yeah, well, I mean, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm hoping that it will. Uh, it, I I need. I'm thinking of having it replace another bring, uh, older Mac that I have in the other room yeah. for the time being. But if, for me, I'm getting it because and not because I want something that's faster or newer, but just as a backup. You know, and, and it could, I would not use it as the server for the programs because all I need is what I've got here. It would be overkill. I would rather have it on a machine where I really need it. But no, it's, it's, those things are great. But it, so everybody is trying to change the rules on me. NiceCast is trying to change the rules on me. Skype is trying to change the rules on me. And I say to both of them, a big fuck you. You know, you know the old saying, right? The only thing constant is change. Yeah, and I hate that saying. <laughs> and, but it's, it's, the, it's the what I live by. It's how it's IT to a T. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's constant is change, and that's so you're always in flux. Yeah. What are you talking about? The Trump White House? There we go. Hey, you must be proud. You must be yeah. proud that uh, he's in vi that his administration is in violation. Forget about all the 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 big stuff going on. He's monetizing. He's monetizing the presidential seal. He is, isn't he? Down at Mar-a-Lago. He's putting it. He's ordered uh, twelve hundred uh, or so, uh, you know, seals, 
and yeah. he's going to place them on the golf course. That is so. <laughs> I love it. Oh. Hey, one more Democrat is unemployed in the Trump White House today. Uh, his economic True. advisor. Yeah, but and, uh, and you know the news. He he fires a uh, or the, he quits. Uh, the Democrat quits. And, you know, we, we may have peace with North Vietnam, but nobody's talking about that, that North nope. Vietnam says, oh, now we're ready to give up on it. No, they aren't I, saying they're ready to w give up on it. They said they're willing to, to talk, negotiate to negotiate uh, 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 arms rollbacks or whatever. Uh, in Before, which case, if I were, if I were uh, um, um, Kim, Kim Jong-un, Jong I would say fuck you from this standpoint. That how dare you tell me when you have nuclear weapons that I can't have them, you know, well, to protect I, myself? Yeah, well, the, the idea is that if they come to a peaceful agreement, that's much better. No, but why should that peaceful the, agreement another country why should, with nuclear arms? Oh, John Perulis is trying to call us. Let me do this. Uh, let me do this. Then, uh, Oh, John, you, you, I need to add you to my contacts. Well, no. John, yeah, you're, he's calling. What he's doing is he's calling. You, everybody's seen the work that I'm doing here. He's calling from another phone, uh, oh, I, I, from another number, I think, or something like that. No, John, can't do that. Can't do that. Okay. Does a phone need to be added as a contact? Well, no, he, he didn't add himself as a contact. So now I'm trying to call him. But, <laughs> oh, well, uh, add to contacts. Okay, send. Uh, okay, then John will have to sign. I can't. I can't get this thing to uh, to work. Okay, all right. Well, that's. He's I, I tried. Huh? Uh, well, I, I can't change it. So, fuck it. You know, J John. What you have to do, uh, uh, John. John, you're, you're you're for some reason you're calling us on a line that isn't. Uh, he can't hear you. Yeah. If he's calling you, he's got his thing off. Yeah, add to group call. There we go. Now it says add to group call, and we'll call him and see if he's there. And then I will I will ream his ass out for not <laughs> doing it the way he should do it. But now he's now he's not answering. Uh, no. yeah, he he's pissed but, over uh, the Democrat I, losing his job. I will, I, 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 oh, there we go. Now now he's calling. See, I uh, added him to the group. So he's oh, calling, yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. John, What are you using a different computer tonight? No. You know what happens? Every time I log in, mm -hmm. uh, it says my account has been hacked, and I have to reset my password oh. and <clears throat> get in. So I, I don't know why it's doing well, that. Well, you have to. Time. Every time you have to ask me to add you as a contact, otherwise I can't directly go to it. But I managed to do a workaround here. So yeah. Now, now okay. I, I, I guess I got to go to my Skype uh, com command console yeah. here and turn the camera on. Yeah. Uh, well, what, I, what I wonder is why they keep telling you your machine, your, your, it's been hacked. Sure. They've done it. They said it again. Yeah. I, I don't know. You know, it's probably the Russians. <laughs> no, no, there's probably something. Four hundred pound guy sitting on his bed in New Jersey. Oh wait a minute. Okay, there we go. Okay, the camera's on. There right. we go. My there, camera. there's John. Okay, okay. I got something for you guys. Well, later so on, this, later on, when you get a chance, thing. when you get a chance, go up and right. say, go up to contacts and go add mm -hmm. new contact, and then ask me to accept you, and I can have oh, this perfect. new okay. thing taken care of. Okay. Okay. Or, yeah, either so that, or I sent you one you saying, want, "Do you want to?" be added or whatever so anyway okay see, see right. it, it's always fucking me over and i keep looking for something other than skype you know that we could use but everything yeah. is so is not yeah. it's nothing is as easy to use as skype you know that's true uh, yeah I, I i don't know what the issue is it's weird i mean i you know i'm tech savvy i run a uh, live streaming business yeah. you know i yeah i'm on the internet all the time yeah uh, you know, I study the tech. I got a degree in web development. Uh, you know, this is nuts. I, you know, ever since Microsoft took over Scott, Skype, they fucked it up. It used to be an okay platform until their geeks got, at, got, well, uh, no, they, got I, their hands in. I will disagree with you to a certain extent. <clears throat> the picture is much better than it ever was. I think everybody will agree. You know, I, do you think that's because of the cameras? The, no, I don't think it's because of the cameras because some of these people are using the same yeah. cameras they were using two years ago. Yeah. It's they have improved yeah. the transmission, but they've they unimproved the rest of it. 
You have less things you can yeah. tweak, yeah. you know, uh, less things you can do. And uh, if, you know, it would change the whole look of this show if I had to go to the new Skype. Yeah. yeah. Speaking of tech, just yeah. thought I would uh, drop a, a plug for uh, Apple this weekend. You know, they're doing that uh, $29 battery, correct? Yeah, my, Marjorie did. Yeah, yeah. So I, I got I, one for Faye. It took forever to get the battery. They ordered it like maybe three weeks, and then they finally called me and said, the battery's here, come on in. I dropped the phone off, mm -hmm. come back a couple of hours later to pick up the phone, and they said, yeah, we had a problem. The battery uh, wasn't working, and the phone didn't pass <laughs> diagnostics. Oh, God. Oh. So they said, there's no one to give you another phone. And they gave me a completely refurbished, like, brand new phone. That's Same fine. Model. That's fine. But nine bucks. You know what happened? My watch. Yeah. My watch. The battery warped. And, oh, and, it, and so the, the front of this separated from the rest of it. And I, you know, I, so I took it in. They said, oh, we just have, we have to put in a new battery. So um, they took my watch for a day. I came back the next day. I had a new battery. And so it's like a brand new phone. I mean, you know. So, uh, but, but it's. Can't, can't argue with their support. They're a little more expensive with everything, but damn. You get what you pay for. Well, they probably, no, they probably realize. They pro what's that, John? Well, that's, that's, a, that's a Jackery uh, backup battery. It has uh, uh, USB inputs. So uh, I've, uh, I was live streaming uh, the Block the Boat campaign two years ago, and on the docks at Seattle, yeah, and I used this battery. It kept me going on my uh, iPhone mm -hmm. wow. all day long. I was broadcasting for eight straight hours wow. just off of this thing. So these backup but, batteries but, are amazing. Yeah. But the, so they so, 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 break. so what happened? So they just <laughs> they just <laughs> gave you a new they gave you a new phone or a, a refurb. Which is, yeah, which is which is better which is better than getting a new phone because you know this one works. Right, this is a six. They wouldn't have a new one, but yeah, uh, yeah they just said. Uh, I, well, they they uh, when I had a six, I had a problem with it, and I took it back and I had the insurance, and they gave me another six and it had a problem. They gave me another one, it had a problem. And then they sent me one, it was the wrong color, so they said, "Do you want a six S?" I said, "Sure," <laughs> and uh, and then they got it right. And yeah. then I get a new battery for the 6S, 29 bucks. Yeah, 29 bucks. You can't beat it. I, and I just bought a 7 from a, yeah. from the Internet. I'm yeah. going to get rid of this brick that's a, the Galaxy 7, S7 that I have mm -hmm. that I use to play Wheel of Fortune on. It's the only thing I do with it because it's all I can do with it. Yeah. And I'm going to sell that, and I just bought a 7, so I'll have two two iPhones again. Yeah, I have. This, this is a 5S. It works fine. I've had it for a couple of years. I bought it new from Verizon, part of their deal. Well, this is the, but this, this is no the, problem. This is I the, found that it this got is slow a 7S. with the 5s. I had to upgrade. It was just too slow. You well, know, I, I was I was worried. I was worried when I got the 7S uh, that uh, it would be too large, you know, to fit in my pocket and so on. And uh, there were a couple of pockets in old pants and stuff where it doesn't fit right. Where they were meant to have, like, I have a coat, an old uh, ski, you know, a winter, real winter jacket that has a place where you can put your phone, but it won't fit because it wasn't, it was made to fit the older iPhones. But I like this size, you know, this is. On the Plus? Yeah, that's yeah. my plus. six. Yeah. That's what, yeah. the Plus. It's a set, this is a 7S Plus, I think. Yeah. Oh, really? 6S? No, hey, 6S. Hey, plus. so you guys, I got another tech question for you. I, I don't know if you can see this. Well, I got this. This a nice AKG mic. Yeah. But I've only got it hooked up with an XLR cable, so I don't know how to get That's it into my computer. Is there an adapter or something? Uh, uh, you know, yeah. Uh, you, Behringer sells one for twenty nine bucks, and uh, it's yeah. uh, got the um, uh, it's got the right plugs. It's it, it's red. Uh, do you know what I'm talking about? Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, I yeah, I have a Behringer adapter, uh, but it's an older one, uh, you know, for putting well, up. Well, what you have is what's called an XLR. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, uh, uh, well, of course, that, I use an X, two XLRs here. Uh, you need a mixer. Huh? You got to have a mixer. But, but I have a mixer for that, you know. Yeah. Ah, okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, what are you putting your XLR into? 
Well, I use it for my broadcast stuff. I use I it for, uh, you know. Yeah. You plug it into a mixer or uh, like. Uh, uh, well, I could plug. This needs power. So it needs phantom power. Phantom so power. I, I could plug it into one of my cameras that will give it phantom power or uh, a mixer. I got a sure mixer, you know, yeah. that, that yeah, can that's, power. That's what you use. And, uh, yeah. and, uh, you know, um, I, I'm trying to, I'm looking at my thing. Uh, oh, you're looking at your thing. Yeah, yeah this is pretty, there's a USB <laughs> uh, that plugs into uh, the USB thing, and then there's some uh, other things that plugs into your uh, out, your, um, what, what, I forgot the name. Oh, th <laughs> welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Alex Bennett's uh, garage where we're discussing <laughs> electronics tonight. If your aux out. AUX, aux input. Let's not get okay. too complicated. Right. Most people out there are not keeping up with this. And I, if it wasn't yeah, for Rob, I would have been able to hook mine up. Hmm? He, if I wasn't for Rob, I wouldn't have been able to hook mine up. Figure out where my, where my and, where my camera with XLRs on it is. It usually was right there. Did somebody come in and steal it? No. Of course. Of course. Not the cleaning yeah. woman. This one doesn't steal. Uh, let's see here. Yeah. This, oh, yeah. <laughs> where, where the hell did that, did that go? That's weird. That's strange. Huh. Yeah, now it's going to drive me nuts all night. Where, where the hell is my other camera? Oh, well, I'll find it. It's Wait, what's somewhere. your which camera is that? It's uh, it's a, uh, a a flash card camera. It has a you know, it's a regular camera. Oh, oh, I you know I figured I could use the, my Zoom. That's right. Put the, put the uh, XLR uh, right there. Yeah. And then uh, you, there's a USB uh, connection right here. Did you put it? And uh, then I could probably go from there into the computer. This yeah. is a great tool, by the way, folks. Uh, it's a Zoom. Uh, I got a oh, Wave MP3 recorder. Those are microphones on the top. It's, it's a great thing for recording pro sound. And the zoom I over there. Where, where it is. Yeah. H6 zoom. I love that thing. Yeah, I love this thing too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I've shot video uh, on my LX10, which doesn't have any audio inputs, and recorded the audio with this zoom mm -hmm. and was able to sync it up pretty good uh i mean it perfectly and the audio and the video are just fantastic but um you know then i can use a range of microphones i could use my wind socks and my yeah. sennheiser mics and all that you know yeah uh, i think he's still looking for his camera i can't find it I hey, you, you know you guys you guys both have the same pajamas on you huh? know the kind of wc feels uh, checkerboard pattern thing yeah there. well look at yeah. look at <laughs> phil it's the same thing we're all we're all dressed alike no but this what is the, the gabnet uniform what the hell <laughs> well i got i got oh what's this black pants <laughs> show your pants let's show our show our mics show our pants yeah uh, do you wear your pants low no <laughs> I've been arrested by you once before, so I don't want to happen again. <laughs> yeah, I, I got a feeling that it was a different boat. Yeah, right. you, you, <laughs> Greenpeacers took over a Chevron boat and then put a banner off the side. <laughs> and so they, they went up on a little inflatable and then yeah. they climbed up the side uh, of a Chevron uh, tanker or something like that and yeah, yeah. dropped down the Greenpeace banner. And then we got to arrest them. Oh, you know, the, those tankers um, dock right in Richmond. You know, yeah. there's a this dock right where they uh, unload their oil. So yeah. that must have this been where it was. I was actually crazy. at the refinery on oh. the other side. You know, that that's where I was, yeah. in the mud fields. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, we went into their pump houses uh, with big chains and locks, and we locked up, uh, shut off the pump so they couldn't pump their effluent. So I think since then they have double lined their their ponds for their ortho chemical division. So I don't know. You know, the world's going to hell anyway. I don't know if any of this matters. It's sorry to be but a most little of anybody seen me walking around here. I cannot figure out what happened to my uh, 
my camera. That bothers hmm. me. Well, the world will be a better place well, tomorrow it was because here a I couple be of here. Weeks ago. What? <laughs> what? Where are you going? Are you going to the hospital? Uh, oh. I, it's like uh -huh. my competition, and I can submit the the last oh, three. Oh, yeah. I did. So, uh, so when are you sending me the mini Mac? Uh, next, uh, well, I had planned on going down to Monterey uh, and seeing my friend and pulling some stuff off of it, and then having him uh, wipe it, and uh, that may not happen tomorrow. So oh, okay. I'll figure out how to do it and uh, just call up Apple and make sure they wipe it right for you. Just leave, then, let's just leave the porn on there. You know. There's no porn on there. I tell you, I have a Drobo. <laughs> oh, well, and, then forget it. I don't want it. Yeah, no. you know, the only thing that's on there are the programs uh, and a couple of JPEGs that are on the, uh, on the screen. But um, other than that, I don't put anything on the drive. So why do you need to wipe it? Uh, well, it's, on, it's got, you know... Banking stuff and, uh, uh, you know, so if you go into the, um, what is it, uh, not the operating system, but the uh, <laughs> Safari and, you know, you click on my bank, it all comes up automatically. Uh, See how little I have. Sure you, just make sure you spell Monterey right, Bill. Oh, well, if you, if, you, if you leave that there, you'll make it easy for Alex to transfer the money. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, from his account, my account to his. <laughs> yeah, I could never. Uh, spelling has not been one of my. Uh, uh, yeah. I, I saw that beautiful you know, picture. I, I, I like neatened up everything in these rooms here, and, and look what happened. It was in the other room. There it is. That's it. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh is is that a cannon? Yeah, it's cannon. But you may notice yeah. it has see on the side here. Yeah, yeah right. It has the XLRs. XLRs. Yeah, I I have a Sony version of that. Yeah, I, I you know I th that one I, this one I really like. It's a really good camera, but I love. I'll tell you what I love most of all. I'll tell you. I'll tell you. There are two film. Uh, I've got I've got more video cameras for more years than anybody you can <laughs> name. I mean, uh, I've got you know s some old ones that you know don't do wide and whatever. But anyway, the best one. I've two best cameras i've ever owned are the gopro yeah gopros are fantastic and the iphone yeah I, you, you I, know what i, I you shot know a whole funny? video in 4k on the iphone and it was gorgeous yeah i know you know uh we when i was in greenpeace yeah we, we shot everything on uh, 16 millimeter mm -hmm. and uh the film this film. Yeah. this iphone 5s can shoot better, clearer video than any of the 16 millimeter yeah. we shot. And the one that I, mean, I have here, weird? the one that I have here, shoots 4K. In and 4K. And yeah. I went on, I went, we went on a trip, and I decided to shoot the whole trip, not to take that camera, not to take the GoPro, but just to, armed with this, and shoot the whole weekend. Yeah. And I, it's gorgeous, yeah. just gorgeous. Yeah. There's only yeah. one problem with these folks, and problem with the GoPro, if you're if you're a professional. You can't zoom. You can, mm -hmm. but it's awful. Well, yeah, yeah. It's you a, gotta flip yeah. the. Uh, 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 you can do yeah. better a uh, composition, say with a camera like the one I just showed you, where I've got a zoom lens on it and all of that, and I've got all yeah. kinds of bells yeah. and whistles yeah. and and so on. But if you want to just shoot your vacation, but make sure you take something where you can offload your your video onto a, like a, a stick or something like that, because. You can fill this up pretty fast, especially at 4K. You know? um, yeah. This one, uh, the, it's got a dual camera. Now, I've never taken any video with it, but uh, it, it has. you can shoot in RAW, which means that you'll be able to increase the dynamic range or decrease it, depending on what you need to do mm -hmm. when you're editing. Uh, I, tr I tried <laughs> to remember, though. I was talking to, somebody, to Marjorie the other day about it. There was some system they came out with that, I, that you could buy where it was a camera where you just shoot anything you fucking want to shoot. Forget about forget about. Oh, the Lytro. It. Yeah. And, you, you could go then, back yeah, afterwards and, and refocus it and right. change the <laughs> aperture and all of that right. after you the shot Lytro. the film. That was the Lytro. Uh, but there's a new one out. It's about two grand. It's the size of your iPhone, and it's got 19 cameras in it. And, <laughs> <laughs> it's got 19 lenses. 
and uh, it, it's two grand. I'm trying to remember the name of it, but uh, hey, uh, Phil, if you do remember the name, post it on uh, 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 Alex's YouTube page. I, I'm oh. I'm not uh, I'm not good at posting anything, but let me. Oh, let me you, you send it. me enough it, shit, this week, you know. Yeah, yeah I, I know how to use that one. Yeah. Bomb, bomb. Yeah. Hello, Ray Renati. How are you? Uh, Ray Ray. It's hey, been an I'm exciting sure. show so far. I've been looking for my camera. <laughs> and, and 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 we're showing our pants. And, and Phil was saying we can't be here tomorrow night. So you know it's, it's oh. so anyway. Phil, get me that mini Mac before you go into the hospital, because in case you die, I still oh. want to be able to get it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Is that tomorrow? Yeah. Uh, big yeah. surgery. No, his surgery is what? <laughs> when is it? The nineteenth. The nineteenth. Oh, Let me see. I have uh, camera club tomorrow. Let me put that down on my. Camera club. I, I should I'm put that take, down I'm on my take, calendar. What should I put it down as? Ass reaming? Uh, we got uh, a get memorial. Huh? <laughs> How long is the uh, The prostate uh, memorial. Yeah, the yeah. prostate memorial. And the mirror. I love my I love my ex wife Ronnie tonight when I said when I get together with other the old people when, uh, when I get together with other old people all we seem to talk about is health stuff. Medicare. She says, yeah, she yes. says I call it an organ <laughs> recital. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. So anyway, let's let's uh, talk about some stuff here. Okay. Uh, okay, and we don't, have, you know, mm -hmm. you know, I the gun thing. Keep it in mind. Think about oh, it all God. the time. But we don't have to talk about it. Okay. Please no. Uh, well, hey, because Jeff it, Sessions sued California today. Yeah, he sued California. You know, I was yeah. going to bring that up. He sued California today because mm -hmm. they are they are calling they're saying they're a sanctuary state and they're suing yeah. them against giving sanctuary. And it's going to be <laughs> interesting to see how this works out because you know. Republicans have always been states' rights advocates, except yeah. when it comes to something they want. Like they were never, they're not states' rights advocates where marijuana is concerned or where mm -hmm. this thing is concerned, being a sanctuary state. Um, and the fact is that if you believe in states' rights, you believe it in, in, in it implicitly, and they apparently don't believe in it implicitly, you know? So, mm -hmm. hey, uh, it's, it's called the Lights. Pocket size L16. We're on to another topic altogether. <laughs> <laughs> what? Out of a clear it, blue it's, sky. It, it's the uh, light, the L I G H T. Great. Okay, S good. So send, me, send, wow. send me the information. Like the on it. It's 2000 I can't afford. Okay. Hey, Tony, does your mom have to take a leak? No, actually, she just asked me that I put the alarm on. I, I locked every okay. door in the house and the windows. No one's coming in. <laughs> okay, okay. Just want to check. Right. Yeah, but, but 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 is she going to have to go to the bathroom at some point during this show? I'm actually upstairs because I'm sleeping up here tonight. Now your cause... father, your father still lives with you, right? Yeah. Why can't yeah, he in... take her to the fucking bathroom? Exactly, because you know what? He's fed up with it. He says, "I had her all day. I can't take her anymore." <laughs> <laughs> He's watching all that's, movies. I can't know, take that's her what anymore. it comes to. I get sometimes to think that Marjorie feels that way about me. You know, like you take care of him. I've had to deal with him all these weeks. So. Says, this is what I love about this show. You can't get this shit anywhere else. I mean, this is and totally I'm normal like, stuff. This is, you you know, know, this is what America so runs exciting. on. Yeah. It is it's exciting, man. We're I'm sick. Fun. We're mentally sick. <laughs> I shouldn't have guns. I'm all like this. Anyway, anyway, uh, uh, so it looks like you know. Here, here's here's the thing. If and, and Phil, t you know, I know, I know, you try to defend Trump because that's your job on the show. But for a moment, for a moment, oh, today I'm a snowflake. For, I'm sorry. For for Trump, he fired the poor Jewish man. And uh, uh, listen, he fired the he fired the only guy that the business community had confidence in. And you know, I, uh, I, don't, I, I wait a minute, I, hold on a second. What, what, Rob? I don't believe he fired him. I think he quit. I mean, he didn't fire him. He quit. Rather. Yeah. yeah. You don't think he quit, over or the, you over the tariffs, over the yeah. steel tariffs? No, yeah. he, he yeah. quit. Well, but it's because uh, Trump wouldn't do what he wanted him to do. And uh, and uh, you know the guy. Believed no, Trump in... wouldn't take his advice. 
Right. Well, the guy believed what he believed, and he stood up for his position. And you know, for as much as uh, people, uh, well, he, almost, he almost he, 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 he was almost, no good. He, he almost quit over. He, guy. he almost quit over Charlottesville. Yeah, I know. Yeah, you know, this is uh, the economic advisor you're yeah. talking about. Cohen. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. One of the few moderates left. Yeah, yeah. Uh, another unemployed Jew to get rid of all the Jews in the White well, House. Uh, no, first, I, first Jared, it, it seem, then, it's, uh, that, then it's Ivanka. Well, now, minute. now it's Cohen. Yeah, but wait a minute. Today he, uh, I think he put out a, uh, um, uh, what do you call it, a, 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 a <laughs> television ad for new employees at the White House that they're hiring again, because <laughs> at, at the press conference he had, I think he brought that up that oh well you know when people leave there's a job for somebody else. It was like he was advertising for new recruits to work for him. But let me let me say this to you, uh, a couple of things. Number one. Uh, would you have wanted to work for Donald Trump when he was in business? No. <laughs> Good question. I, I mean, Good this is apparently question. the way he ran his businesses, and this is the reason they were going bankrupt all the time. You know, he didn't know how to be uh, management. He didn't know how to run a company. You, you run a company by having others do things. Yeah. If, if he trusted you, Mm-hmm. You were you were like gold. Oh well, until you, wait, until he got a burr up his ass, and then you were yeah. out the door. That's well, how he's running the White House. He lost his trust. Well, I, you know, and, and uh, you know how you how you lose his trust. You you don't do what he wants you to do. You don't agree well, I mean, you know, if if you're good a good boss and you're good management, yeah, and you've got somebody who says, "Hey, Alex, you know." I know you're gonna you want to do it this way, but I think you should be doing it this way because if you do it that way, it's going to be more of a problem. That's and what I, Cohen said. Wait a minute, and I yeah, and I will listen to you, and I will take your advice because that's one of the reasons I hired you. I will well, take I'm your sure advice if I consider it valid. But I'm, I'm sure you know I'm not going to get sn- snotty about it and go, hey, you know, how dare you tell me how to run my company? I don't think anybody said how dare you. Uh, Cohen said I uh, don't agree with you, and uh, because of that, I'm I'm out of here. I don't, you know, uh, he has not fired uh, a lot of people. He wasn't happy with uh, uh, who's his attorney general, yeah, but, but, but they quit because they can't NAFTA. take it any longer. Well, the attorney general's still there. He can't and, fire him. Why can't he fire him? Because if he, if he goes and fires him, it'll look like obstruction. No, because yes, it will. he refused himself. So the next guy he brings in that he handpicks, right? It could yeah. be determined that he's not good. Well, obviously, he wouldn't refuse no, you can't, himself. You can't hamstring the White House by saying now you're stuck with this attorney general because he took his, uh, his stuff away from you're Russia. You're stuck One thing with the attorney the general government. when they're investigating your White House. Well, yeah, you but know, his, when his they're, when general they're, can't, when can't stand up for him. When they're investigating your White House, you really can't get rid of the it's attorney general. The attorney general is supposed to stand up for the Constitution, and as much as I don't like Jeff Sessions, at least he's doing that. He does, yeah. yes. And, and you know, he, he didn't get fired. You know, he uh, Trump he says— He can't he fire bl- him. Well, it doesn't matter. You know, uh, he, he could fire him if he wanted to. But, I mean, yeah. all these people quitting it's seems to it should indicate to— on him. It, yeah, it on might him. blow up on him, but those things don't seem to bother all him. All these people quitting should be assigned to people like you, Phil, that this is a purely dysfunctional <laughs> White House. Uh, Aren't you? I don't know. He's up against a, a lot of opposition. Well, I mean, Phil, always, Phil. The people that he hired? He's not, been talking about not, draining, draining the swamp. It's his own fucking swamp he's drained. Well, you the, know, the White uh, House, listen, let me just say this. The White House is hopeless. I mean, literally hopeless. She left last week. Oh, ho- yeah, hope. Did <laughs> <laughs> you hear the joke? Boo. <laughs> Boo. Yeah. What? Oh, Rob, say it again. I couldn't hear you. Did you hear the joke he made about Melania? No. 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 He made a joke in public about everybody leaving the White House, and he said that there was something about, you know, maybe Melania will be next. Oh, <laughs> oh geez. <laughs> you know, and then he's like, you love me, right? You love me. She told me, behave. <sighs> She's never there anyway. No, they don't travel together. They don't do anything together anymore. And that's, uh, wouldn't you be that way if, if you were married to that fat pig? Do you know, I, there's a great new show that they, they ran the pilot of Sunday after the Oscars. Uh, Sundays with Alec Baldwin. Yes. And I didn't, think, I didn't know if he was going to be any good. 
This guy was the best inter- one of the best interviewers I've heard so far. I mean, he's really good. And he had Jerry Seinfeld on, and he kept referring to Trump as that derma. <laughs> yeah. He, said, he looks nothing. He, he looks like a stuffed derma. <laughs> what were you going to say, Ray? A few years ago, Alec Baldwin had an interview show on NPR. I don't think many people even knew about it, but it was really good. And I used to no, listen to does, it every Sunday. Yeah, He does the TCM with Robert Osborne. Yeah, but that's not an interview show. That's just discussing movies. No, he used course. to do an NPR interview show that was excellent. This is, this and it is, went on for about six months, yeah. I think. This I like a, your speech in Glen Gary, Glen Ross. Put the coffee oh. down. Well, coffee you know, clothes. they talked about that on the show because well, Jerry oh, Seinfeld okay. was saying... How does it feel to know that you did something in a film which is going to be quoted for the next hundred years? <laughs> you know, uh, that is now having. Was, I've never seen Glen Gary Glenn Ross. Oh, uh, I've seen it seven, eight. I've seen it more times than Pulp Fiction. Yeah, uh, uh, and I plan. I plan to eventually before I die. Hey, we're, my my wife and I still live uh, Young Frankenstein and Monty Python. I mean, those jokes are like they're what a forty years old, and we yeah. still laugh at yeah. them. So are most green piecers. <laughs> <laughs> no, I Ring go, out no, the I, dead. No I, no, I go back and watch comedies from the uh, from the from the forties that are still funny yeah. to this day. You know, uh, but anyway, the point that I'm making is that uh, um, uh, we've got a very dysfunctional White House right now, and I'm why I'm afraid for the country is there's nothing, there's no glue there. You know. Right, right. It's like, well, it's a bad sitcom. The White House is a bad sitcom. Uh, yeah. yeah, if you it's wrote this as a sitcom, might have brought peace with uh, North uh, Korea that no one else no, has been able oh, to. Oh do. yeah, he's re- responsible for peace with North Korea <laughs> yes. when nobody would. When, when, wait a minute, when Pence wouldn't even talk to them, and it That's took okay. the South Koreans. It took the South Koreans going to North Korea to start making this deal happen. So don't say that he made a deal. This deal with the, would never have happened no. if it wasn't no. for the pressure no. that Trump put on China. Not at all. Not at all. If, do you give Trump? Do you give Trump the uh, the credit for McDonald's using fresh meat in their quarter pounders? Yeah, <laughs> I didn't know they used fresh meat. Well, no, no, they, I, 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 well, I didn't know they used wait frozen a minute. meat. It's, oh, you're calling pink slime meat? No, wait a minute. They no, uh, no, they no. have <laughs> announced that they are doing away with the pre-frozen <laughs> patties. That they would throw on the grill and defrost right there in front of you for your edification. But that, that's the that's what makes the taste. No, no, what no. taste? That's what no, robs every no, no. inch of the taste out of it. It's no, the no, no. In England, McDonald's has had to use fresh meat because of the mad cow disease. Oh. And when I was there, uh, the McDonald's was actually really good, although it cost twice as much well, as that's here. Because, that's because you went to a Wimpy's the morning before. Yeah, ever have a Wimpy burger in England? Yeah. No. It's the real American hamburger? No. It, it's just a bunch of gristle on a bun. Oh, it's terrible. That's great. It, there's nothing worse. I, I, I was uh, out of money in, in uh, 1972. I went to England, uh, London, and uh, I ran out of money, and I needed my mother to send some more money. Uh, I So I went to the Wimpy, and I got the real American hamburger. Well, that was awful. And uh, then at the hotel, they had cheese and chutney sandwiches. Those were the cheapest thing on the menu. They were great. <laughs> yeah. but, uh, Changed since 1972. Yeah. A lot. Well, to me, to me, the worst yeah, place, driving on the, wrong the side worst of the country road. I've ever <laughs> eaten in, the worst country I've ever eaten in uh, yeah. is, is England. Okay. Yeah. 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 Uh, England, that, England they, they, they just don't know how to cook food. Spain, yeah. some parts of Spain. Uh, uh, Sp- oh, no, Spain, the food is incredible everywhere. Incredible. I had a, and and it, in Italy, it's incredible everywhere. France is the best. I'd, uh, I'd say, I disagree good. with you. I think I think Italy's got them beaten. Because Italy, uh, yeah. you, can, you, you, can eat, you can eat at a gas station and the food is great. That's because you're a pasta guy. You know, Italy has a lot of pasta. They, uh, whereas in France, they, they uh, prepare these meals that are just they're unbelievable, whether it's mussels or... or uh, There's more diversity. Or, yeah. Well, you know, uh, we just lost, uh, he died a couple of weeks ago, Paul Bocuse, who in Lyon uh, invented Nouvelle Cuisine. Mm. Which was this French cuisine where everything was really tiny. 
<laughs> yeah. You know? And and they uh, and it's not only that they have tiny because they have a lot of different tastes, but a lot of them use the fresh foods from whatever region they're in, and then cook them in the classic uh, French style. Um, I, I, I went to a restaurant, uh, Alan, Alan Ducasis. Uh, he's got restaurants all over the world, but I happened to have gone into his one in Monaco, and when the bill came. Uh, I looked at them and I said, I turned white and I said, I hope the tips included. <laughs> because mm -hmm. it was, it, this is in uh, 19, 2002 and uh, uh, the bill for four people for dinner was a thousand euros. <laughs> and, 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 that would make me choke. <laughs> you know, my, but here's how I feel about spending that much money for dinner. And I know the girlfriend would probably disagree with me. Although I think you can get a lot of inexpensive, really fine, decent meals around. But I, if I spend $1,000 for dinner, okay, I don't, I don't, I'm not going to take a shit for a week because I don't want to waste it. <laughs> you know, because it, 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 yes, it may taste good at the moment, but eventually it's just going to be a big turd in the toilet bowl. So why pay a thousand bucks for that? Some of it was the service. There was uh, 25 tables and maybe 60, 65 waiters. Uh, my daughter, she, my youngest daughter, she dropped her napkin. Before it hit the floor, this guy had the napkin and another one on her lap. Uh, it was uh, service like I had never had before. Well, yeah, but uh, fuck the service. I want how good's the food? You know. uh, the, the food was good you know, because Duke Assis, his whole thing is to take uh, the, the uh, food from Provence and, or, or whatever area is in, in this case it was Provence, and uh, cook it in the classic uh, style. And he even served things up differently. Uh, he, he came out with this, these endives in a shot glass. Oh, and uh, it, it, was, it was delicious. You know, everything, everything yeah, there fine, was delicious. But, but how much was it again? In 2002, it was oh, uh, a thousand, a thousand yeah. euros. Now, which would was, have been something like about thirteen hundred dollars at that point. Right. Yeah, I think so. And uh, you know, my kids hardly ate anything. Only two people had an appetizer. It was uh, four adults. Yeah. I was the only one that drank, and uh, uh, not everybody had dessert, and only two of us had an appetizer. Did you charge, he charge you for no the water? Bill. I mean, uh, what? Uh, no, I, I, I had some sort of uh, like um, uh, gin drink. Let me let me ask you this on a qualitative point here. You spent thirteen hundred dollars for the dinner, right? Right. There were four of you, right? Four and two kids. Four and two kids. Oh, barely there, ate anything. Oh, ba barely ate anything. Was it worth that? Was it that good that it was worth that much money? I'm still talking about it. <laughs> well, no, you're talking about it because you spent that much money. Uh, it, it was it was one of the best meals I had. had. I've had better. Better than the steak. Uh, well, yeah, better than the steak. And uh, you know, I've had better, but uh, it's certainly memorable. Well, see now, for me, well, it'd be memorable I if I got spend, that kind of a bill at the end of the I, dinner too. What? I would rather spend a thousand bucks on a World Series game than on food. You know, yeah, I've I, I got different priorities. You, you know, it was in the uh, Hotel du Paris in Monaco, uh, and it was called the Louis the Fourteenth Restaurant, I think. Uh, and the chef is Alan Ducasis. But that hotel is is magnificent. It's right next to the casino, uh, and it's just it's just a magnificent place. If if I could afford. If I was smart and I would have saved my money and invested a lot, uh, you know, uh, money earlier, I would love to live in Monaco. I felt so safe there uh, because they have cameras everywhere. Now you might say that's Big Brother, <laughs> but there's no crime. There is no crime. I wouldn't want to live in Monaco. I'd, I wouldn't mind living on the Riviera around in there, but I, I don't think I'd want to live in Monaco. Because that's just like one building on top of another building it's on top of so another. Crowded. It's so crowded. In the crowded. summer, you can't even get your. It takes it takes hours to go a few miles. Uh, well, you know, you take the train, uh, yeah. and it, it was really convenient. But uh, well, I'm sorry, I drive through Europe. Yeah, New York is just as crowded as this, and oh, and no, this is no, clean. No, no, uh, it it, it uh, I because I've been there. Gee, I've been there four or five times, something like that. 
And I just, I, it's nice to go for the day to go in there, but you don't want to spend more than the day there, you know, uh, because yeah. it, it, it's too crowded. You know, you uh -huh. stay in towns around it, you know, and uh, nice little, eats and yeah, the there's eats, uh, yeah. all around it. It, it. it is magnificent. I had this one hotel that I stayed at um, uh, called the uh, Cap, called Capistel. It's still there. And I found it one night because we were driving, looking for a place to rest our weary head. And there was a sign that said Capistel with an arrow. And so I went down this road and I wind up at this villa. And at that time, it was quite inexpensive, oddly enough. A few years back, I went back a few years later, it was like $300 a night. But it was even cheaper when we stayed there. And what it was was an old Russian villa that had been turned into a hotel on, the, on, the, on a cape uh, overlooking the French Riviera. And I went back there a second time a few years later because it was just so wonderful. I, in fact, we went there to spend the night. And we spent two or three days because the hotel was so fucking nice. You know, you know, you asked me about the meal. It comes to mind now. It was also in France, in Alsace-Lorraine. I was driving, and I was near Strasbourg, and I, and I pulled over in this town that had a post office, a cow, and an auberge. And I had lunch there. The family comes out, and they serve the lunch. This was so unbelievable. I think Phil's trying to impress us here. Yeah, well, just because I can pronounce the French word. <laughs> it's auberge, not auberge. Yeah, no, exactly. <laughs> you can't even pronounce it. Auberge? Uh, yeah. So the AU Jeff, is you've been to Europe, yeah, My right? wife is French. I've been to France like 25 times. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> yeah, so I, I, so I just, shut up, Phil. I love, I love that area. Uh, you know, I love that area. I love yeah. the food. Uh, Je Jeff just wait a minute. Jeff just yeah. Okay, thank you. Jeff just nodded his head. What are you nodding about? Well, two things. One, I I I think about France. Yeah. I, I you know I study different languages, and I'm terrible at all of them. Uh, you know. Yeah. But I, I always say that when I was in high school, I took French. And I, I actually had to take a, uh, a state of New York test. The regions. The regions. You guys remember. Yeah. So I took my regions for France during the winter, around January. And it snowed. And the snow was so bad that they closed the test. It was, it was thrown out. Nobody took it. Well, if it wasn't for that snow, I'd still be in French class today. <laughs> uh, I've had that happen with me with Regents exams. <laughs> My 11th grade year when I had like three of them to take, right. um, it seemed that year somebody compromised the tests. And so they kept canceling them. And you'd look at the paper and see, oh, the newspaper would say, oh, they canceled the science one. They canceled the math. Mm. I wound up taking no regents and got a regents diploma because they had to give it to us. The oh, French, they are a funny race. They eat with their hands and fuck with their face. I think that's the old saying. <laughs> and um, uh, the, uh, uh, the only thing that I, that I, I can sincerely say about I'm, I'm not fond of the French, although I'm sure Ray is. Otherwise, he wouldn't have gone back 25 times. But yeah. I, I have to say something. Some of them smell terrible. Really? I, well, that's changed in recent years. But you know what I'm talking about. But, but, yes, I do. I, when I, the first time I went there and I went on the metro, it was the most disgusting <laughs> smell I've ever. I felt like I was in a dump in Mexico or something. Yeah. So, uh, but that doesn't happen anymore. People actually use de deodorant now. Tell me when that changed because it was uh, circa 2000. I've told this story. Circa 2005, I'm working in New York City. And the parent company is Thompson Electronics, and the sub company was Screen uh, Technicolor. Mm -hmm. uh, and and the board of directors used to show up on our offices on Broadway twice a year for their board meetings because it was convenient for everybody to fly in. And all these French people came in, and man, oh man, I had to help them get set up. You know, get their Wi-Fi set up in the room. Mm -hmm. Stand next to these people, you want to die. Yeah, I, we. We were in, um, we were in uh, Geneva, uh, no, excuse me, we were in uh, the Olympics in Alberville. And um, was it in Alberville? Yeah, we had, no, we, we were in Geneva and we had to get a car to go to Alberville. And we had this French woman who 
uh, we rented the car from. She was, you know, the, the person at the desk, and then she takes us out to the car. And she's standing between two of us. And all of a sudden, this odor is wafting. And we both are looking <laughs> past her to each other going, is that how bad? Is she smell? Does she smell like that? I mean, it's like, the woman the bump, bump? it's like the woman hadn't taken a bath in maybe the last 30 years of her life. Oh, yeah. They're dressed to the nines, these people. And, oh, and they, she how was many dressed years very nicely. Yeah. yeah. What? what year was this? Oh, Alex? this was, this was uh, God, that was the Alberville uh, Olympics that had to be in 80-something. Well, yeah, yeah, that's what, yeah, it was bad. I'd say over the last 10 years, it's changed dramatically. I don't ever have that anymore. I don't ever smell that anymore. Yeah, but I know the smell you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, it's it may, it may, it may we we almost started gagging. But, Gag a maggot. But we figured it, it yeah. would make a great story when she finally went away, you know. Uh, so that was uh, so anyway. Night two. Hmm. I had a couple uh, stories here. Hold on a second. Let me, games. Let's... Uh, Winter Olympics. Well, uh, uh, you don't have to look it up. But at, it was the Alberville Olympics. 92. Yeah, 90, 92. 92. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Guess who's going to run probably against Mario Cuomo for governor of the state of, Cal of New York? I mean, in the primaries. Uh, I don't well, know. Well, apparently, I'm sure. apparently, you, it, I, I, that's stupid of me to say guess because you're never going to guess. Yeah. Okay. Is it At the previous mayor. Do you know Cynthia Nixon is? Oh, no. Yeah, yeah. She's yeah. the uh, one the from actress? that TV show, the New York uh, uh, the Single Girls. What oh, the heck? Yeah, yeah. We got Sex in the, in the City. City. Yeah. Sex in the yeah. City. Uh, Sex in the City. Uh, she's been openly, she's, she, she's a Democrat. Oh, she's been openly cr uh, critical of Cuomo for many yeah. months as she mulled openly. her campaign. Oh, my God. Um, so uh, uh, Cynthia Nixon may be running for governor of New York, but we, you know, I don't think she's going to beat Cuomo out for the nomination because that's all politics, you know. It's all name recognition. And then, she does have name recognition. That, and who in New York is going to vote for Nixon again? Yeah, that's, that's what they were saying. <laughs> Somebody said so in the He's article, the it actually says Cynthia Nixon, no relation to Richard Nixon. <laughs> hey, the, Nixon makes great watches. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, Nixon watches. Really yeah, great. I've seen those. Yeah. yeah. So did you see that camera? Did you look it up? N no. N uh, no. <laughs> oh. <laughs> someone, someone uh, uh, one of the uh, commentators uh, identified it as a light L16 camera. That's what yeah. I said. Okay, anyway, he, forget about that. Two grand. Uh, forget about that. Oh, oh but I can't. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we don't care. It would hurt my feelings. <laughs> you know, my feelings. <laughs> Are you ready for this? This is a good one. Something yeah. you can finally like about Fox. They're going off the air? No. Ready for this? Hold on to your seats. Fox Network Group ad sales chief Joe Marchese announced that Fox is targeting cutting ad time way down. Minutes. To two minutes and can I tell the story, please? Hey, yeah, I'm the two, well read. To two minutes an hour. <laughs> did, hey, it. that's cool. How'd you pop that up, man? What'd you do? <laughs> what? I just you took got... it off the internet and put it on there. That's Cynthia Nixon and her girlfriend. Anyway. Oh, 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 oh did you have a picture of her or something? Yeah, it's on the side uh, oh, on the Skype. Oh, what are you screen. using? Uh, video mixer, or V mix, or Vi mix or something? How'd you no, I just it? downloaded it. Why don't we do another off. show like after this show off the air where we can discuss all the technical things and cameras? Okay. <laughs> Which one, Cynthia Nixon? <laughs> the bald one. Oh. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Sorry. And she's a lesbian. Yeah. Uh, they both are. What? <laughs> Who both are? Uh, he posted a picture of uh, Cynthia Nixon and her girlfriend. Oh, okay. yeah. Did you miss that? That's what we've been talking about. Oh, I see. Well, it came up here, but I didn't. I didn't open it up. He's still talking about. Oh, wait a minute. Here, here. I can open it up, and Fox. people can see what you're talking about. Hold on a second. Let me see. Fox here. used to pick him up in a limo. Now he. There we go. Fox. See, ladies and gentlemen, that's what they're talking about. That picture there of Cynthia Nixon, right there. I don't see anything. Uh, you gotta, you gotta see? click on the Skype stuff. Anyway. Uh, there's a thing on the corner. Okay. I, uh, yeah. A little, a little that's 
bubble. Yeah, thing. now I got to undo, undo that bubble. How do I get rid of it? Uh, oh, it oh, there we go. There we just do that again. again. Okay. Oh. So everybody oh, sorry, saw that Peter. picture. See, I could I could show that on the uh, on the air. Anyway. I'm afraid to do that. If I click on something, I'll I'll probably be hacked again. And okay. I'll have Can I get to back to this thing about now Fox we're... saying they're going to cut down. two minutes an hour? <laughs> what? Yeah. They say that uh, uh, they announced a target at a private industry event <clears throat> it hosted last week in Los Angeles where advertisers, buyers, and executives from rival media companies discussed TV's advertising woes. Uh, bringing commercial time down to only two minutes would be a major change. No shit. You know what it yeah, is now? You know, 10 seconds. you know what it is now? Uh, it's probably 20 15, minutes. 15, no, it's 13 20? minutes. 13 I minutes an hour in a network show. Yeah, but yeah. If you bring it down to two minutes. How many commercials can you get at, at 10 seconds apiece? Well, in a, uh, what, uh, at whatever you're getting, I think this is a great idea. If I were an advertiser, I'd be delighted with it. Sure. Number one, you you're going to have to pay more for money. them because there's less real estate, you know, so you're going to have to pay more for each spot. But you're not going to be in a cluster of people that you get buried in. Like, unless right. you are the first commercial after the break or the last commercial after the break, uh, going back into the shows, you're probably now your commercial isn't even going to be seen when people go zipping through the goddamn thing. So right. sell two minutes and make it two minutes that, uh, you know, that, that people don't aren't bothered by. Put it in the middle of the show or wherever. I mean, I don't know why they didn't say four minutes an hour, because if you just did two minutes at the bottom and two minutes at the top, nobody would complain. There's more, just I a, noticed they were DeVane. experiment. Hmm? Yeah. What? More leg and less what John were you Devane. saying, Ray? Oh, they were experimenting with that in the Olympics quite a bit, I noticed. And you, they would go right into a, like a 10-second commercial, and you wouldn't even realize you just watched the commercial until it was over. Oh, and really? then they'd go right back into the sport. They did I, it all a number of times. Did they do that wow, on the that network? That is real they do the, ops, man. Did they do I know, the, but it, I liked it. I liked it better than – I mean, I got the message. Then I didn't feel like there was any did time they do that on the and, network, or do they do that on some of their uh, ancillary properties? No, they did it on the network. Oh, really? I quite didn't a bit. see it that way. I thought I saw way too many commercials. Well, they were doing both. They were doing the longer ones and the shorter ones. They were doing both types. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, uh, the, here, here, here. I think this this idea is is a great idea. I mean, I've often I often said to radio stations where I work when I suddenly realized that we were up to I think twenty three minutes an hour of commercials. Mm. And now in some stations, mm -hmm. like when I was working at WOR, for which I still haven't seen a check, uh, I, I got a, uh, I got a, um, uh, it's in the mail. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 we went into a break and I said to Albert, who was my producer over at WOR, uh, well, how long is this break? And he said, seven minutes. He said, seven Whoa. minutes. And there were like four of these breaks an hour. And I'm going, yeah. why don't, uh, you know, I, I, I could probably like go home, uh, have a soda, <laughs> get back in the car, come back down, and we'd be through the commercial break. I mean, this was ridiculous, <laughs> just ridiculous. And I s often said to some of my bosses when these number of ads were increasing, why don't we play less commercials and charge more for them? And they couldn't get with that concept. You it know? doesn't work, unfortunately. It, well, like Clear Channel, when I was with Clear Channel, yeah. they tried that. Oh, really? Down the Yeah, they, it was six minutes an hour. I think we were at, uh, we did three breaks an hour, and they were six minutes or seven minutes each. Uh, it's still too much. Crazy. Yeah. Uh, and a music station, no less. Yeah. And they had this whole big thing, and they were going to cut back to six minutes an hour, and they what? were going to hold to this. And, and it lasted, I think, six months, and... Goodbye. Well, the, the, problem like the problem is the problem is that hour. if everybody in the business went to that kind of mo method, it would work because then you could charge more for the spots. But when you're charging more for the spots and everybody else is charging a dollar, you know, uh, uh, selling them for a dime, you know, to be competitive, you've got to have that many commercials. Yeah, but I think the other problem is just uh, how do you tell customers? No, how do you tell clients? No, we don't have any real estate for you. Yeah, wouldn't they right? sell so, out? Yeah, you get you get uh, you know a big deal from you know some national account but, or something. Now you're saying, well, we've got a full roster. 
But, you know, with Fox, I mean, they can say, hey, we only have two minutes and this is how much it's going to cost you because you have a kind of an exclusivity here. Yeah, that's wonderful and nice. And, but I, and I think that would work in television, but I don't think it would work in radio. You just, but you're, you're never going to get anybody to say, no, we won't take your money because we're full. Speaking Especially of it's speaking, only running a small all amount they have to of sell is time. Huh? All they, all they have to sell is time. Yes, but I think it's slightly different in television. If you're a network, uh, I don't then, think content matters to these guys, to these guys or anyone else. No, it is. I don't think it's a matter. I don't think content matters either, but I do think exclusivity could matter. In yeah, other but words, I think content wait, wait, is just Rob, around commercials. Rob, Rob, you're right. Exclusivity will matter. I think the problem comes in when they start looking at what they're turning away for this exclusivity. Right. You get this thing and you go, hmm. Look at this waiting list. These people would advertise now if we had the time, if we had the, the inventory to give them. Let's add another com minute. Let's add another minute. And, and you know, within a year's time, they've forgotten all about okay. it. Because years ago, I met um, uh, this guy um, uh, who painted the eyes. Uh, what was his name? Um, oh, yeah, uh, the, the, the crazy eye the, uh, that his kid, wife did. Kids it too. Eye, yeah, with the eyes. Yeah. Um, Wait a minute! She did all the artwork. Well, no, she didn't. She didn't. She didn't do all the artwork. I saw what they did. She did half the paintings, and he did the other half. Really, uh, I, I right. was there. I watched right. them work. Okay. Okay. Uh, um, uh, what were they called? What was it? What was their name? I didn't know their name as well as I know my own. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> uh, I I said to him, I was at his house, and uh, they lived in the in the marina, and they in their apartment, they, you know. He, he, one night Big he would nuts. do he would do one painting, and the next night she'd do a, a, her painting. And they had a slightly different style, Keen, but they Walter Keen. Walter Keane. Uh, they they both did kids. You know, people all had the eyes. That was the same similarity. But her style was more of a svelte kind of uh, person. His were like Chinese kids, you know, things like that. Uh, mm -hmm. And he. Uh, and I said to him, I said, so how many do you do of these? And he says, uh, well, we, we do, we get about one a day out. They were like this fucking factory, right? And I, would, I said, and, and you know, how much do you get for them? He said, oh, well, we get like 30,000 a picture or whatever. And I go, well, what if the demand uh, go, uh, uh, goes up? Okay. He said, well, I used to be in real estate. If the demand goes up, you raise the prices. You know, you don't change your output because that devalues your output. You just simply raise the prices. And that's exactly what I think a network probably is thinking of doing here, is that you, you have less real estate to sell, so therefore you raise the prices to make that real estate more worth it. Uh, I think Do that it's, at the Olympics. I think it's possible with television. Yeah. I, I don't know if it's possible with, um, uh, with radio. Because radio has far too comp many competitors in a given market. You agree, Rob? And that they're all trying to knock their brains out. And yeah, and, and, but the, the other side of it is just the American business such that it is doesn't think that way. They think very short term, the next quarter or the next uh, pay, a stock payment that they have to make, dividend or whatever it is. And they're looking to eke out every last little nickel. And so while your idea would work in theory, I don't think they get there because they're not patient enough. If they see money coming in, they're not going to turn it away. Okay. And I also think you get to a point where, so let's just say you're running two minutes. Of, what was it? How many, how many minutes an hour? Two minutes an hour. We all know, because I took advertising 101 when I was going for my broadcast mm -hmm. uh, degree, you, you get your best bang for your buck when, when you have re repetition, right? Yeah. Only have a small uh, number of spots that you're running on your station. Are you getting the repetition that you need? Well, uh, you know, you're right. I mean, people will probably, they'll probably be selling a lot of 15-second commercials. Although there are a lot of 15-second yeah. commercials now. And it's amazing what they do with the economy. By the way, uh, yes, Rick. Uh, Tell me what you think about this. In France, bringing up France again, on TV, you say you have an hour crime drama. Yeah. The, the, the show will go on for like 47 minutes, mm -hmm. and then, then they put on all the commercials up until the next yeah. hour. That, well, that was the European style. They did that yeah. in France. They did that in, they did that in England. It was like on the half hours, they would do like five minutes of commercials. 
Who then, pays oh, them? Okay. Well, well five, France does it now. They do it right at the end of the hour. If it's an hour uh, long. No, uh, you know like what they did in Germany? You know what they did in Germany? What's that? They had an hour of commercials at Whoa. the beginning of the night. Who? At the beginning of the night. And then there were no commercials in the shows. Yeah, but who would pay for that? Well, to begin with, do you know what one of the most popular shows was that they had in Germany? The Hour show? of Commercials. Well, I'll tell you, um, the commercials in France, the production values are really high. And I actually enjoy watching them. They're very artistic. Yeah. yeah. So sometimes I'll sit there and watch them, even though the show's over. Well, we do some good commercials here, too, but yeah. not all of them are. You know, right. not, and pretty and, much in France, they all are like for that whole. 10 well, they're, to 15 they're minutes, probably they're all really good. If you're, they're fighting for eyeballs for qual with with quality. Yes, Jeff. Yeah. I always remember Barry Gray's show. Yeah. Which which would be at seven o'clock. I'm sorry, uh, eleven o'clock. It was actually it was ten o'clock, and then it moved to eleven. Yeah, so I always remember the eleven one, and uh, he would introduce himself but then he would go right to advertisements and he would knock out a whole bunch of advertisements. yes he did you're right i don't know what was it like 15 minutes i don't i don't, I don't know how sure. long the commercial breaks were it's but, it but he forever. would do i remember he would do long commercial breaks because he was doing a talk show and he had a whole bunch of people who wanted to talk he didn't he didn't want to interrupt the flow of the talk I know I did his show on Saturday nights. Uh, I was his replacement on Saturday nights, used his studio, and basically used his format. And I think we took maybe two breaks an hour or something because then you didn't, you, it wasn't going to ruin the flow of discussion. Okay? And he, he always had a great show. My friend oh. Barry was his doorman uh, at, the, at the station. So they had to have a doorman to let people well, so in. Well, so was a guy by the name of Maurice Tunick, who I know even oh. better. Well, I, I did you know Barry, Barry Martin? No, no. All right. So he he used to you know, let the guys in. I guess the building was locked, and uh, for him to get his guests in. Yeah, I remember the yeah. the key was on the bottom of the, uh, of the door. You had to lean down to open up the door. I remember that. I remember it because the guy would come, Maurice in my case, and he would because uh, I went on after Barry, and they would uh, turn the turn the thing, you know. And then they would let people in. Of course, he was letting in some very famous people. So it was, right. you know. Yeah. But uh, uh, now, you, now I forgot what I was going to say. Um, you were talking about uh, the commercials on. Uh, oh yeah. So so I I do remember that we did not do we did long commercial breaks about twice during the hour, and uh, and that was because of the nature of the show. People have said to me, well, why don't you try uh, the. Uh, the citizen panel format on broadcast radio. And I've thought of, uh, you know, talking to people about doing it, but I could never fix it. But no, but no, I'm not worried about that. I think you would all keep it clean if I asked you to keep it clean. Okay. That I'm not worried about. Plus there are seven second delays and things like digital <laughs> delays. But the question I had with myself was what happens when we go to a seven minute commercial break? And do I have to then say to the stations, if you want to try this format, you got to go for a smaller break, or we have to do two really huge breaks during the hour, or do I just let you guys keep talking and we all keep talking, and they simply go away and listen to the commercials and come yeah, back and catch up yeah, with ch us? Change the subject every 15 minutes. And, no, uh, I don't. I don't want to do that. That's not the nature know, of what we if, do. With this. But if you were on broadcast, you'd have. If you change the subject every 15 minutes and you put your breaks in. And those, no, and those my, my whole idea was is that we, we, we simply go to a break and there's an announcement. We're going to take out time from their discussion. We'll get back to their discussion in a moment. And we just keep talking. And when they come back, they're just joining our conversation again. That's so the only way I could see doing it. it. What? You don't think you would do it by blocks where you would choose a topic for a block and then no, discuss it? because, six, it, because this regular show, radio is. That, that, yeah, this show, this show doesn't work that way, and I've never worked that way. I've never gone in and uh, there was a time where I went, today's topic is. And yeah. I just found that that was wrong because what it does, it locks the audience in having to talk about that topic. And you're also going to lose yeah. A, yeah. Um, an amount of people. You're some. going to oh, lose well, an amount of going. people who say, oh, well, I'm not interested in that topic. Hey, guys, uh, my screen's acting a little weird. Are, are you experiencing no. that too? No, 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 no. no not back now. There he is. Yeah, yeah. No, you're, you're fine. frozen on Skype. No, um, on Skype, you look fine for me. No, no, no you were. You were. Your voice was. 
was off. M- my voice? Yeah. Yeah, your, your oh. voice. And your also whole, your picture well, from movement. No. Yeah. It looks fine from here, and that's all that matters no. for the audience well, out there. Phil, Phil, you're perpetually frozen in my view. I see. It. Oh, uh, that's because I'm having my neck. Now this is where this is where going on broadcast radio would be a failure. Is when we start talking about well, my monitor, my camera isn't working, but yours is. Uh, my prostate's oh, not working. As long as it, like, all of you are smooth, you look great. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, even Tony, he hasn't said a word, but even Tony. No, when he, Tony did speak, he was outrageous, man. That that little five seconds of Tony went a long way. About about his mother. <laughs> yeah, father. Well, you know, he he he's running the, the ba- uh, he's going to be running the Bates Motel any day now. <laughs> Who was the woman that hacked her mother to death? And uh, Lucy, Lucy Borden. She was all excited. Borden. Rita Marina was on the Oscars. Yeah. 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 Trump. Uh, uh, oh, here, here's one for you. Trump and Kimmel are going at it over the Oscars. Oh, did you see yeah. that? Uh, yeah. Um, Jimmy Kimmel and Donald Trump rekindled their war of words when Trump took to social media to rub it, uh, uh, rub, rub in about the ratings for Sunday's Oscar ceremony, which was hosted by Kimmel. Trump sent out a tweet this morning and wrote, lowest rated Oscars in history. Problem is, we don't have stars anymore, except our president. Just kidding, of course. (laughs) Kimmel returned fire later, (laughs) tweeting, thanks, lowest rated president in history. (laughs) And it's true. It's true. He is the lowest rated president at after his first year of any president in history. Now, some polls like Rasputin, uh, Rasputin and, and so forth are giving him at 48 and 50. Yes, you cannot trust Rasputin. Rasputin is completely fixed. Well, that's that's what they said during the election. And that was the only poll that told it that Trump was going to win. Well, because it was favoring Trump. So, yeah, and so he won. You know, and if he didn't win, everybody would have forgotten that Rasmussen was wrong. Well, yeah, but Rasmussen, right. rather. Rasmussen, I <laughs> call it. We're going to say that no matter what. Rasputin. <laughs> yeah. That broken clock is twice a day. Yeah, that's exactly it. So uh, that's our uh, our uh, the. Hey, we didn't even talk about the Oscars, man. It's like eight fifty-five oh. California time here. We're going to go off and. We didn't even get to talk about the fantastic. Well, I will like say Sam Rockwell what, or, or Francis McDormand lives in West Marin, not too far from here. Yeah, that's right. And Kobe yeah, Bryant won an Oscar. She, she, yeah. Can I say this about about Francis McDormand? Man, is she loony. Uh, <laughs> He's a whack. She's a whack. Bill Valley, what do you expect? But here's the thing about the What's Oscars. Do you know friend? what was wrong about oh. the Oscars this year? <laughs> was incredibly wrong. That stupid crystal bullshit thing. No, right? no, right. no. They always do the in memoriam, right? Yeah. They oh, they messed up. Do you see who they left out this year? Yes. A lot of people. Adam West. <gasps> and the, John and, uh, Mahoney, who was on Frasier. Glenn oh, Campbell. Glenn, Glenn, Glenn Campbell. Glenn Campbell. Um, yeah, he was, didn't he, even actually he was win. best known for music and TV work, but he was also in True Grit, right? Yeah. Left out Jay Thomas. <laughs> Uh, they, but the J. Tom, yeah, J. Thomas wasn't in movies, really. I thought he died. In was in, uh, oh, he was, he, was doing, he was in Mr. Holland's. Uh, uh, other yeah, other was. ones they Mr. missed. Della Reese they missed. Oh my God. Partridge, D- David Cassidy. Oh. Uh, Robert yeah, David Cassidy. Robert Guillaume. Like uh, Frank Vincent from Goodfellas and The Sopranos. Oh yeah. uh, Animal oh. House director uh, actor Stephen First. And uh, uh, a regular she, she, on uh, man, on on the Dick Van Dyke show, and earlier when she was a kid, she was in movies. Rosemary. They didn't mention any oh, of right, those people. Rosemary. Right, Rosemary. Wow, and, she must have been 120. Hey, yes, hey, she is was. Abe Vigoda still dead? Yes, he's still dead. <laughs> <laughs> Dorothy Mal- Malone, bit, who won who won, bet, won Best Supporting Actress, wasn't mentioned. And Louis Gilbert, who was uh, a, a director for films like Alfie, uh, wasn't mentioned. And he just died a couple of weeks ago, or a week ago. Toby Hooper, who gave us the Tex- Texas Chainsaw Massacre. So they missed, they left out a lot of people. You know, yeah. uh, you could yeah. argue that some of them were in TV. But, you know, if you don't want to argue, if you want to argue that, you still, you can't, you know, Adam West made a movie of Batman. I- I think Glenn Campbell actually won an Oscar for the song. 
Did he? Rhinestone I'm Cowboy. pretty sure. Yeah. Like no, Rhinestone Cowboy Cowboys. wasn't the song from True Grit. No, no, more know. recently, like three years ago, I think he won an Oscar or was nominated. I know, I'm not he, sure if he won, but I know he was nominated yeah. for a song in a movie. Wow. Like 19, 2015. So, so you know, so they missed, they missed a lot of people. Hey, did they put well, the, uh, that, into uh, slavery? Alex, when what? you came uh -huh. back from The Shape of Water, you said you thought it was going to win, and you did. Well, I hoped it would win. I thought that maybe yeah. uh, Get Out was going to win because of the way they, they weight the voting in the Oscars. But uh, I, was, I was happy that Shape of Water won. I thought it was just, it's <laughs> yeah, just a too. really, yeah. really beautifully done motion picture. It, it's the I art of movies. Agree. It's the I art of movies. I saw Clint Eastwood film on Saturday, uh, 1517 Paris. Uh, it was amazing what he was able to do with non-professional actors. Yeah. What yeah. turn out a terrible movie? So anyway, yeah, it wasn't so bad. It was actually pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, uh, tell that to Ray, who is a professional actor who could have stood to get the work. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, we gotta go. Hey, say goodbye, Phil. Goodbye, Phil. Good. Say goodbye, Jeff. Good night. Uh, Kevin, say good night. Good night, Kevin. Ray. Good night, Ray. Say good night, Rob. Good night. Say good night, Tony. <laughs> Snipe tomorrow. Uh, John, and say good night. And of course, Tony. And, 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 no, I said Tony. Oh, okay. and, and say good night, Gracie. Everybody, give a big wave goodbye so they can see that you love them and that you think the world of them. That's our citizens panel, folks. That's the way it goes. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Where's, where, where's me? Okay. They're gone. Let me hang up on them. I got to get rid of them because I have to hang up on this whole thing so that I can... Let the next show, which is the uh, uh, the intersection with Jack and Amy, uh, come by next over most of the same gab net. It will be followed at midnight Eastern time by Connections. And then tomorrow night uh, at uh, 8.30, we had a full night of programming. Uh, it's the Arena with the franchise MC At 9.30, Damian Chaplin will be here with the... Uh, 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 with the exchange, and then I will be back again here tomorrow night at 10. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye. Bye.